Hello, everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Uh, I hope today we will have a good topic to discuss, and I believe it's a very important topic can impact the life of many people. You know, many years ago, I maybe maybe ten years ago, time go fast. I was having a debate in a chat program. It's called Pal Talk, and uh, the debate is about uh, women in Islam. And uh, you know, second day I receive a long message. You know, I used to have my Pal Talk open so anyone can text me the same as Skype. Uh, so I received a long message from a woman. She was going to marry a Muslim. And um, she was nervous about such a decision. And in her message, she's saying that uh, she entered talk in her wedding day. She was so nervous, and she's waiting for the car to pick her up, the limousine, which means she will get married like in, in an hour or two. And uh, she's ready to go, and uh, she she decided to go to Pal Talk. And then she's noticed there is a chat room talking about women, uh, women in Islam, you know, something like that, women right in Islam, etc. And she enter, and she heard the Muslim saying that a Muslim man he have the right to beat his wife. And you know, we have like uh, this this Muslim, he was a little bit honest, so he was saying things kind of uh, how it like, I mean, the way it is, not. Uh, uh, not a fabricator so this woman she sent me a message saying yesterday uh, there is something very important happened to me I and she told me the story I never spoke to her actually I never never spoke to her even after that uh, she sent that message and disappeared and she said she was going to get married from a Muslim and then she heard the debate and she told uh, after she heard that um, she called the, her future husband and she told him she want to change the date because she is not sure. And she said, the second she said that to him, she, he started threatening her, saying to her, do you know how much how much this has cost me? Do you know how much I spent money? I'm going to find you. I'm going to make your life miserable. I'm going, you know, to the point he go to, like, threaten to, to threaten her life. And she said to me, thank you, because, look, you know, I just told him I'm not sure and he start he's talking like as if you want to kill me so what if something happened in the future so she was saying thank you watching your debate yesterday changed my life now many naive people you know they are driven by emotion emotion like God he created us with emotion and emotion can be good but emotion it can be stupid if it is not uh, wise i mean you have to match you have to walk together emotion and wisdom when i do anything in life like now let us say i want to go and i like to visit the old ancient assyrian uh, um, buildings in iraq but it's occupied by isis i mean this is stupid right let's say i have emotion let's say i am an assyrian and i want to go there to visit my her in heritage but that would be stupid i have emotion but my emotion will lead me into i mean they, they will kill me there this is isis territory they occupy it now now for sure they are gone but i'm saying that you should not be a fool by emotion you have always to think wisely and not only would mr muslim man any, any anyone i mean uh it's good to be in love no nobody's saying love is good you know life without love is useless but love, not to the point you are a fool. So now what is the problem with marrying someone? He is a Muslim. First of all, we as a Christians, and I don't know you guys, the one listening, how many of you are a Christian or not. Uh, but as a Christians, we cannot marry non-believer. And there is many verses in the Bible speaking about that in the Old Testament and the New Testament. So when you when you say I want to marry non-believer, when I say non-believer, I mean non-Christian. You are uh, you are doing something against the command and the teaching and the wisdom of the Bible. 
now for you this is sin this is not sin you know I mean uh, if you don't care for the, the Bible anyway I mean why you think this is a problem then you can sleep around there is many people they uh, they take off their panty for two in two seconds yet they claim to be Christians the same as the Muslims but that will not make a difference for you if I show you a verse say this this is wrong right if I show you that you should not sleep around before getting married then you will say I mean uh, uh, yeah I agree with it but I do it okay so this is the, when we say the Bible says is, is is for those who consider the Bible the book of God and they are really Christians not a Christian by name who don't care really what the Bible says and the Bible says it clearly that you cannot mix between righteousness and non-righteousness those who have God and those who have idols those who have the true belief in the Messiah and those who don't believe in the Messiah the verses is so clear in the Old Testament and the New Testament uh, but as I said if you don't believe in the Bible I mean who care for you I mean you don't you don't care there's many people they claim to be Christians but she have a boyfriend and he have a girlfriend and they we you know they sleep together now all of us we commit sin I'm not saying you know this is not uh, uh, sin is sin but not a lifestyle when you make it a lifestyle then you know that's mean Christianity is not really your lifestyle too if your lifestyle is sleeping around don't don't claim to be Christian you're just um, you know following a you know you are born of our parents they call themselves Christians and maybe you go to the church uh, just to um, it's, it's like a social club so either you follow the Bible or you don't follow the Bible if you don't follow the Bible then you are not a Christian at all you are just pretending fooling yourself saying I am a Christian and I'm not talking about somebody committing sin and then he regret the sin because the nature of a human being is you know he do wrong but a Christian person when he commits sin he said to himself this is wrong I will fight it I will not do it but you make it as a lifestyle that's mean you don't really believe in the Bible and you don't care so the Bible is so clear that we cannot really have mixed marriage we cannot have relationship between a man and a woman it doesn't matter who is the man and who is the woman the, the, the man is the Christian or the woman is the Christian it doesn't matter uh, as long it's only one side Christian and the other one is not that is not uh, the case uh, to 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 practice because the Bible says this is wrong now why the Bible is wrong I mean say, saying this is wrong uh, we will go into details and I will try to explain even for those who don't believe in the Bible anyway because there's many maybe they are atheists and they don't believe in the Bible so the Bible is not a problem for them to to stop them from doing such a thing you see I made many videos before and I say don't marry from somebody from different culture as an example I am an Arab I am an Arab and to make it simple I have different culture you like it you don't well I, I, I am born from the Middle East uh, my family my parents are Middle Eastern so I have different culture what I can do with it so you marry someone like me I am a Christian not even a Muslim you marry someone like me and then you expect to have uh, you know a perfect marriage uh, that will happen only if one of us compromise his culture one of us have to compromise and how much compromise you do I don't know uh, somebody is born in America he grew up in America and he did not really practice uh, his background culture like his parents culture even that one can be still under the influence of his parents culture so what about a person he have totally different culture from yours someone he believe that a man should not be questioned why he did beat his wife you cannot question the man so we are talking about not only a culture thing we are talking about things beyond you know beyond beyond the uh, 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 your expectation so uh, you know I, I wish I can play this video for you this is made by channel 4 in England they recorded uh, people secretly you know in their uh, you know like uh, like investigation and you know the Muslim shakes all over says the man should she he have the right to beat his wife this is the Quran chapter 4 verse number 34 the Quran says beat them so what the problem if the Quran says beat them then you can beat them so when you when you marry from somebody he believed that a man he can beat you then obviously we have a totally different mentality now in the beginning you know when you are uh, 
in the honeymoon he will say to you whatever you wish to, to hear like what do you want to hear actually all men all men in order to get to the panty of the women they say whatever they want the women she like to say to hear right not only Muslim men he said to you I love you he said to you I'm crazy about you he say well he say whatever he say just to get what he want but then later the stories will be different this is what the Muslims believe about women and this is their holy scriptures holy scriptures in case you do not know mean that's that is no question about it there's no compromise this is holy for them so the man is in charge and by the way in Christianity the man in charge too of the house that's will not be the different but the different is what a charge mean the man in Christianity in charge that he is the one who sacrifice himself the same as the Messiah he sacrifice himself to the church so the, the, the Christ he said uh, uh, like the man he sacrificed himself he gave himself the same as the Messiah he gave himself to the church so the Messiah he made the women equal to the church and the man is the same as the Messiah who gave himself so in charge here is not to humiliate you but to sacrifice himself which means his number one priority in life is to make his family happy and his family means his wife is a children's not to think about himself and he is number one so in charge in islam is different in charge in islam women are created as a sexual toys and the purpose of women is not really to have a family the purpose of them is to enjoy them in bed and women she have to obedience which is even the bible says the women she have to be obedience but the women she have to be obedience you know in the way she choose to be which mean when you go in a marriage you say you agree uh, in, a, in an agreement that he is the he is the man I am the woman and we agree to live in such a life this is the obedience It's not about the man he can beat you the obedience here is about he sacrifice himself and I will sacrifice myself too he do his best I do my best he is not better than me and I'm not better than him he is in charge because the man in, in, in society he can do things women they cannot do in the same time women they can do things in society the man he cannot do so everybody he have his job but in Islam the women is always has no job except the bed and making babies and doing laundry and cooking for the man if you see here with me the Quran says as for those that the good woman is the one who is obedience you know and why the man is in charge of the women because Allah he made them he made one of them excel on the other so the man he excelled how he excel because they spend of their property the money on the women so here you notice right away that Islam look down at you as if you are a prostitute the logic is why I am excel because I spend money on you and that is not only disrespect that is far away from what marriage is about marriage is not about I spend money on you because the women she is doing their work too you see if you go outside and you make money and she is staying home and but she don't make money doesn't mean you are better she can work outside too and she can make money but her job in, inside that in, in, indoor is something the man he cannot do it's equal and maybe more important but Islam always think about the women that this is what you are made for you are just a maid at home you are the one who wash dishes you feed the kids you feed the husband and before he sleep you do some some uh, uh, happy ending massage for him do you understand guys what I'm saying the mentality the mentality is different so if I spend money on you that's mean you became my prostitute this is prostitute mentality women she is like a prostitute you spend money on her so you expect what return and what is the return the return you'll be obedience and not only that you see if you are a maid if you are a maid of somebody okay well but still the boss he cannot beat you he can fire you no in Islam he can beat you 
our obedience God in their secret as Allah he told them and then as for those whom you fear rebellion admonish them and banish them uh, uh, to bed the parts and discourage them here the translation by the way is very much big fat lie in different translation they say to you first and second and they had things which is uh, and, and some of them they even they say to you beat them lightly which is absolutely stupid and doesn't make sense and we know that it's not beaten lightly you know we know the hadith where Aisha she said a woman she came to Muhammad and her husband did beat her uh, uh, like even her clothes became a greener than uh, her uh, uh, her 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 skin became uh, greener than her clothes and Muhammad he took the side of the man against the, the woman as you see here in the hadith now Aisha herself she affirmed that she never saw any women she is suffering as much as a believing woman read carefully with me the women she came to Muhammad to complain because Muhammad is the ruler and she said to Aisha she saw Aisha and then she was wearing a green veil and Aisha she said uh, 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 she showed her a spot in her skin from beating caused by beating and it was the habit of the ladies look how the Muslim mentality the habit of the ladies to support each other which means this is not right but this is the habit of the ladies you know ladies are uh, women you know La ladies support each other support each other so when Allah Apostle came Aisha said I have not seen any women suffering as much as a believing woman this is summarized for us the life of women in the time of Muhammad they have no just life she never saw any women between the Arab suffering as much as who as a Muslim woman which means Muslim women is the most of us who suffer I mean all of you speak English better than me and I think the meaning is so clear correct so a believing woman she suffer a lot suffer a lot from what beating and if you read the whole story Muhammad he did not even ask the man why you did beat his wife not only that Muhammad he took his side and he the, the man he did beat his wife because the women she don't want to sleep with him so Muhammad he told her you cannot do that which means he took the side of the man he's, he's right he had to beat you and he he told her you have to sleep with him so Islam promote rape because if a woman she is your wife doesn't mean you can force her into sex but Islam not only force you into sex he the man he can use violence with you beat you and rape you and this is why you see in YouTube someone like this idiot saying teaching the truth about his religion saying a man should not be question questions why he hit his wife in other video this is this uh, Muslim cleric you know he's saying Allah honored wives by instituting and in, in stating the punishment of beating you see that you are honored you are honored this is not something bad so if I want to honor you I will beat you any women like that who uh, who here is a lady like to be honored you know we have a lot of honoring uh, uh, followers of Sharia law they would love to honor you all right so uh, Muslim women are lucky to be beaten this is what this guy is saying and this guy he's saying what's wrong with that I mean what's what, you know and not only that in the video actually that they were saying women they like a harsh man and they say according to study Muslim they fabricate studies according to studies in England most of women they are complaining that their husbands are very weak because they don't beat them I mean if you watch the video you will die laughing this is a study that men, women they are complaining the men are not strong what happened to them they became weak they are not beating us I mean the women they are desperate like why you don't beat us anymore like hello you don't want to be a man the fact a man who beat a woman he is not a man you see one of the sign of being a coward is beating someone is less strength than you doesn't matter who is he even if it's a man like if you are uh, seven foot tall and then you go to someone he is 140 uh, uh, centimeter high and then you want to show that how you are strong that's mean you are a coward even if he's a man so what about beating men women and children a man of honor he will not do that 
so look how they try to justify by fabricating such an an, an, an argument and a logic like how you can you know the prophet says don't beat in her face here we go see the prophet said don't beat her in the face so where you beat her beat her in her chest the same as Muhammad he did beat Aisha in her chest uh, beat her in her ass I mean do you see how Islam honor you the Prophet said don't beat her in the in the face <laughs> so imagine you want to marry someone believe in this and then you are expecting and then you know you see some people they are making articles about uh you know i married a muslim yeah we just see in a few years what you will say you know there is a woman in, in paltok she used to work uh, in a uh, radio station in england islamic radio station she married a muslim and she have from him kids and they made her convert to Islam and they use her for many years to speak in the radio station So she would have fooled many women to convert to Islam and God knows how many women did she were fooled by her and then uh, Her husband went to Jordan. He's a Jordanian and Then he started going to Jordan like every two or three months You know the husband don't work the women she the wife she work She's the one who had the money Where are you going to Jordan? Where are you coming from from Jordan? So it felt like there's something fishy with this Jordan thing later. She discovered that he married 14 15 years old young child in Jordan and You know when she find out she went crazy and she decided to divorce him and then she decided to leave Islam and blah, 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 drama But it is not the fault of the Muslim man. It's your fault. It's you being stupid they use you they made you convert to Islam. They made you promote Islam They made you to fool many women to into Islam and now today you are saying to me You just found out what Islam is about. Well, you know from the beginning you're talking the radio station Islamic radio station Teaching about Islam, but you do not know that the Muslim man he can have up to four wives He can have up to four of you in the same time. He's not cheating according to Muslims A Muslim, he do not need to cheat in order to sleep with someone else. Islam is religion, teach cheating legally. If you do not do it in uh, in England, because Islam uh, like is not the law of England, he can do it still secretly without announcing the marriage. Actually, there's many Muslim men in the in Europe. They have three, four wives. And then they register them as a single mother because then she can get the child support There's no father support the the government will pay which means the Muslim will have 60 kids and you from your tax You will pay for his kids There's actually a report on YouTube about a guy. He have many wives in Australia He lived in Australia all his life for more than 20 years. He never worked for a day Not even a day The women the Muslim women they get a child support for his children from the government everything is for free their food their apartment their rent because they are not registered as wife legally but for them in Islam it's okay because for them at the end of the day the law of the government is not their law it is a Sharia law so Sharia law saying that they are their his wives they married in the mosque so legally he can sleep with them according to Islam and you know the government they have to pay for the children because the woman she said I do not know who is the father I do not know who who was the father so uh, when you want to you know when you talk about uh, I want to I want to marry first of all shouldn't you ask yourself what the word marriage mean like you see guys here even in translation look what the Muslim they say to us it says here if you cannot be fair with the orphan and then they translate saying Mary the, an Arabic doesn't say Mary. There's nowhere in the verse it says Mary. It says Fankihu. The word Inkahu mean F them. F them. And look what the verse saying. 
I want people to analyze carefully with me. If women who they are seem good to you, okay, by spending from your property, and uh, but what kind of uh, what exactly uh, is that like uh, marry a woman she you love her no 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 this not, there's there's no marriage here it's just if in them if a woman she you you think she is good for you which means she is beautiful she is whatever and then look what the Quran says uh, what kind of women how many women we can have it says starting from two so if two or three or four if you cannot if two or three or four then can you then you can if one and here justice by the way is not about being just it's about being you cannot afford it so why in Islam I will answer you Kenneth uh, why in Islam it says go and if two and a three and four like is it is it the is it the standard to start with two yes Islam prefer you to have two and three and four but only it is not likable to have one only the one who cannot afford it then okay go for one but a good muslim who is following allah he should start with two and three and four because muhammad he said he want to increase the number of muslims so marriage here is not exist this is this is a sex contract now i, I, I will go back to the verse i want to see the question what if uh, uh, if uh, one Christian uh, married to a Muslim woman, then later they have a child, a child is a Christian. Later the Muslim women convert to Christianity. My friend, you are you are describing for me a beautiful story. Most likely is not going to happen. So you are guessing maybe this is will happen. What if this is not happen? What if she, what is the opposite? What if the woman she was able to make you and your children Muslims? Secondly, who said to you you can marry a, a Muslim woman? If you if you marry a Muslim woman, her family they will do honor killing. Maybe you do not know that, right? Because it's forbidden in Islam to marry a Muslim woman. And here you need to ask yourself why in Islam a man he can marry Christian women, but a Muslim woman she cannot marry a Christian man because the the law is that the children they belong to their father. So Islam allow just for the sake of increasing the number of Muslim allow the Muslim man to have a, a, a non-Muslim woman in his bed but not because he will love her but because to increase otherwise why a Muslim woman she cannot marry uh, a, a Christian man or a Hindu man she cannot you see if you go if you search if you search in Google Tunisia just just uh, left the ban of marrying uh, non-muslims but this is the only country in the middle east did that because they are trying to uh, they are under the influence of many european uh, many tunisian they lived in uh, did live in europe so now they decide that this is not right i mean uh, you know so but this is against islam there's many islamic countries they made a threat against tunis actually they threat them they will cut them they be caught them they will not buy product from them just because they decide to allow uh, a Tunisian woman to marry non-Muslim. Why a Muslim woman is not allowed to marry non-Muslim? This is Islam online. You can search on the internet. So, uh, the point of marriage here, obviously, there's a there's a there is something fishy. I can marry from you as a man, but you cannot marry. I can marry your sister, but you cannot marry my sister. Huh, why? Oh, because you are a filthy pig and then if you marry my sister you will make her kids uh, Christians I'm a Muslim I will marry your sister and I will make the, her kids good which is the Muslims right so this is the logic they are not marrying really it just it's, it's a it's a it's a, a agenda it's an agenda to promote uh, the number of, of uh, the Muslims so you will be naive if you uh, think Okay, well, I'm going to marry a Muslim woman and then the kids will be it might be the opposite Actually most of the time is going to be the opposite because Muslims are very well trained to attack Christianity and Everything in Islam is based on attacking Christianity. So this woman or the man you marry he is already full of it All his life he is hearing articles Quran 
the Christians are bad the Christians are actually and here by the way you will see the hypocrisy of the cult of Islam how in Islam it says you cannot take a Christians and Jews as a friends and then in Islam it says you know okay you can marry from them for the sake of promoting the numbers they are willing to do so right if if a Muslim cannot take you as a friend that means your husband cannot take you as a friend let us say you are a Christian woman and you want to marry a Muslim and you know obviously you are not really too much of a Christian woman because you don't care for the Bible for the Bible says it clearly you know you can go to Corinthian you will see clearly it says you cannot do that all you believe take not the Jews and the Christians for friends they are friends one to another and he among you who take them as a friend he is one of them he is a wrongdoer he's an evil okay so now the man he want to marry you but he cannot take you as a friend Guys, are you listening? Did you notice something wrong here? Did you notice something wrong? He he is willing to marry you, but Quran forbid him from taking you as a friend. So what are you? You are a, you know just a, you're a sex partner. Islam does not promote marriage. You see, this is why the Quran did not use the word marriage. Let me let me find you because some some Muslim they will say, "Oh no, the word inkahu uh, it means marriage." Absolutely false. Let me show you the reference. <clears throat> and always, you know, uh, in case you do not know, you know, we don't uh, we don't make things without showing reference and proofs, right? Otherwise, uh, talk is cheap, right? Anyone can talk, and talk is cheap. We don't do Islamic method of uh, argument where talk is cheap, and they say whatever, and they they debate themselves, and they win the argument because nobody is answering them, getting them busted. Uh, so let us see what the word nikah mean. All right, where we can find the word nikah. Here, you will see what the word nikah means. Guys, is it clear? Is the screen clear for you? Can you read the text? Let me try to zoom in more. Nikah literally means sexual intercourse. This is who saying that? This is not a Christian prince. This is their Islamic website. This is alislam.org, official Islamic website. Did we prove it? So what the term the Quran use, which Muslim they claim it's a marriage? F them. Have you ever heard of a God saying go and F2 and the three and four? And if, if you cannot afford it, F1? He could not even use the word marriage. He used the word if them. So you talk about marriage, they talk about if in you. <laughs> Excuse my language. Are you, getting, are you getting the point? So not only we have different culture, we have different definition for the relation you are going through. A Muslim, he can divorce you easy because he is not marrying you. He is hiring you for sex. You can go right now and let us search in Google. Give me a second. A Muslim man, he can divorce you by a text message. As simple, as easy as that. Why it's so easy? Because you are not a wife. You are just a, you are just a woman in the bed. All right. Look at the, the divorce by text message. This is serious. This, you know. So, if you want to be a fool and you think you are marrying a Muslim, you are not marrying a Muslim. You are marrying a text message. 
this is how you important for for the man to the point okay i'm driving my car okay you are divorced all right nice to meet you now take off your panties and get out of my home and by the way in islam you don't get 50 percent of the inheritance or his money you get nothing you get only what is written in the contract i remember when i was in school uh, a guy his name is muhammad he's a bedouin he you know he was upset well we were like very young like a teenage so i said to him what's wrong he said uh the, the, the idiot my father he divorced my mother so well i'm sorry well, well, what happened he said well what happened he have uh he kept marrying younger you know the each one of them she get uh, older and then he replaced her as 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 much as soon he he saved some money he get a new wife and that's what they do and look what happened when he married this woman long time ago they wrote in the contract let us say I, I will transform the, the the money into the dollar you know okay I will give you uh, fifty thousand dollar but this is when he married her 20 years ago All right and 20 years ago the 50 million dollars like five million dollars when he divorced her the money she got from him is what is written in the contract he said it's not enough to buy a TV which means it's not even equal to a one hundred dollar imagine so she spent most of her life washing his underwears taking care of his family and now she have to leave with less than a hundred dollar in her pocket because this is your wages you are not a partner this you are not a partner so if you think you are getting into marriage I, uh, you know, I say to you, sorry, you are being a foolish person. This is not a marriage. Can a divorce occur by text message? You know, and in many Islamic countries, they approve that already. And actually, Sharia court approve it because at the end of the day, yeah, the man, he have the right to divorce you by just stating a, a statement saying, I divorce you. That's it. Be serious guys in the text please we, well, what we are talking about is serious but maybe some of you is taking it as a joke there's many people their life can be changed and can be switched upside down by a, such a mistake they do in their life in the beginning the man who would be nice any man any man i mean any woman any man in the beginning the relationship uh, he love her he's so crazy about her she is so crazy about him so first day you know okay you have a date he opened the door for you uh you know uh, he opened the car door uh, he hold her from your hand to step in the step as if you are like a butterfly and uh, yeah uh, two years after he don't open the door for you he asks you to open the door for him and if you fell down in your face he, he will say to you what's wrong with you are you blind a year before if you fell down he will say honey what happened are you okay so don't be fooled don't be stupid there is no marriage here. It is just a contract for a sexual relationship. So if you don't believe in marriage and you want to sleep with the Muslim, then that's your business. But this is not a marriage. Don't fool yourself. And then what you will do to the children. There is many. Go and see. You can go and search right now in Google. Prophet Google, peace upon him. You will find many women. They never see their children again. Why? The parent, the father, he takes his children for vacation to Saudi Arabia. Search right now. How many women, the Amer American women, forget about what a different country. I, I live in America. Thousands. Cases of women, they cannot see their children ever again. Why? Because they take them home, supposedly for vacation, and then from there he sent a text message, well, they will stay here. What you can do about it. If you don't believe me, go and search on Google. Yeah, you know, Muslim and Muhammad himself, he did that. 
you know, if you don't remember the story of uh, of uh, Sauda, Sauda went to Dama. She became old, and according to the hadith, with my respect to everybody, I don't want to use like word which is not nice, but obviously she became old and ugly and uh, fat and whatever. You know, all the the terms you use in the in a in a street. Uh, you know, I'm just trying to make it just as it is. So. Uh, Actually, there's a verse about it in the Quran. You see, in the Quran, it says, if a woman, if you fear that they are uh, doing the shoes, you beat them. You beat them. But if the man doing the shoes, look what the Quran says. The same act. It, the word the shoes appear in the Quran in two verses in chapter 4 chapter 4 verse 34 and chapter 4 verse number 128 if you have my book you will find it a deception of Allah so if a woman she do the shoes her husband he can stop sleeping with her and this is exactly what he did with Sauda and I shall convince him that don't divorce her let her give me her day because Muhammad he have to give a day for every wife he have 13 wives and hundreds of six slaves so Muhammad, it's okay for the Muslim man if he stop having sex with you. Actually, you are lucky if he stop having sex with you, he don't divorce you. Because this poor woman, Sauda, she will be homeless. There is no retirement. I mean, how she will support herself? She served him all her life and now he will dump her because she became old. So Sauda, she, uh, she spoke to Aisha. She heard that the Prophet, he is going to divorce her because he stopped coming to her house. So Aisha, because she's smart, she said to Muhammad, don't divorce her. I mean, what you will lose? Make an agreement with her that she agree to give you the day which you used to give to her to me. So I will have two days. Two days mean more money because all the gifts, they come to Aisha. If you remember the story where all the wives of Muhammad, they were fighting over the gifts. The gifts, they come to the house of the Prophet, wherever he is. So if the Prophet visiting Aisha, the gift will go to the house of Aisha. If Muhammad visiting Hafsa, but I, but then Aisha, she threat all the people that you know what? If you want the, the gift is a bribe, it's not really a gift. If you want what you're asking for to have to come true, then you better to send it to my house because I am the one who have influence on him, who can make him agree to do what you ask for because the gift is a bribe. It's like you have a minister in a government and you want him to do something for you, so you send him a gift. Otherwise, why people want to send gifts to the prophet? I mean, you're a prophet of God. What does that mean? What's your what? What is the what's gift about? It's about what? And why they are coming to the house of Aisha? So here you will see in chapter four, verse number twenty-eight. It's a story about Muhammad. He don't want to sleep with a woman. She is old. Her name is Sauda bin Tudama, and then they made her agree to give her. You see, eh, there's no problem for the man. If he have no shoes, uh, he don't uh, like her has her, his wife to make an agreement. What? If a woman fears ill treatment from her husband, okay, why the husband he have ill treatment? It's okay, you see, in Islam, the man he can have ill treatment to you. It's okay, it's his right. <laughs> you see, in the verse before it. If the women she have ill treatment, the same word. Look, look how look how they they change the same the, the same word translation changed. Here they translate the word shoes as ill treatment. Here they tr translate the word shoes as rebellion. So when a Muslim woman she do shoes, she is rebellion. If a man do shoes, he is ill treatment to the women. They don't like her. It's okay. He's right. You know, he have the right to, you know, not to treat you God. He don't, he don't like you. You see the double standard? So if you think you can you can live with a man, believe in this, oh, good for you. Hey, you are not a wife. You are just a sexual contract who get paid. And one day he will get rid of you. He have the right even to have four in the same time with you. He can go legally, officially, he can go to McDonald's and sit with four women in his table and he hold their hands and he said to them, today get ready, I'm coming to your bed. In the front of your face. 
legally because this is his religion so you know people they can be foolish and we can be stupid and what we can do for them in the beginning you are in relationship you are driven by 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 emotion you know uh, the guy is nice I like him he's and by the way uh, uh, Western women they like they like Middle Eastern men uh, because Middle Eastern men they have uh, they are different from Western men and let me explain to you you know I am a Middle Eastern right so a Middle Eastern man he don't like a woman to pay like if you go to a place the women no she should not pay it's like a shame but this is not because he's good yeah. Let me explain to you here how, how uh, women they Some women they think because the man he insists he will pay that's mean. He's a good guy That's not because he's a good guy That because he is not self-confident Because in his culture made him believe that if you pay that mean he is a woman He is not a man enough to pay for the women This is the culture so he don't believe that you are equal to him so you can pay too you can afford to pay for your food no you you know no you are with me you will i will pay because if you pay you are insulting me are you getting the point do you guys understand me it's not because he is a you know he's better than a western man no because he look at you down you are under his com this what the you see this is why this is why the verse there it says be, why the man he is in charge do you remember guys why the man is in charge who remember the verse why because they spend of their property do you understand people He spent his money on you so he can enslave you. Is that because he is a good guy? You are, he, he spent his money, so now you have to be what? You have to be obedient. And I'm talking about my own culture. You know, I'm coming from there. And even some Arab Christians, they do that too. I mean, they think because they spend some money on you, it means they own you. And actually, this is the mentality of many people. They spend some money on you, they think you are owned by them. Right? Okay, I paid, you know, I paid. So, it's like you, you are doing a service for in return. So, that's like a prostitution. And actually, Muhammad, he promotes prostitution. If you remember the hadith where it says, that uh, any any women and, and, and male and female they agree to have sex together for a payment you know and the Muslim look here in the translation they don't translate honestly they say to you look look at this translation Allah Apostle said if a man and a woman agree and between two bracket to do temporarily marriage what is that what do you mean a man and a woman they do temporarily marriage you know what I mean Have you ever heard of a cult like this? A man and the women they agree to do what? Uh, sex uh, is that, is that sex because they love each other? No. Here, what Muhammad is talking about, there is a condition. If we search right now in Prophet Google, let us do that. We can ser search for conditions of mutalasi. I will search in English so you can read with me. Conditions of muta. There's conditions. What is the conditions? Let me find you. The conditions. All right. The four pillars of muta. This is what this is Muslim website. Don't say Christian Prince making things up. Blah blah blah. You know I know you Muslim. You know the funny thing about the Muslims. You you bring uh, you bring a cucumber. You make it hold it in his hand. You ask him what is this? He said to you, "This is apple." Okay. You put it in his mouth. 
and you ask him to buy it, bite it what is this um, uh, this is apple you make him uh, you know chew okay how it tastes uh, tastes like apple so you show it to him you put it in his mouth still he deny and he don't want to say yes this is what it is so this is what we do we show it to them and for the and still they will say to me liar so this is a Muslim website the four pillars of muta what is the four pillars of those women who you enjoy give them their appointed wages guys do you see the word wages people women ladies do you see the word wages okay here we have an opportunity for you ladies who want to make some money who is a lady here she like to make some money so number one pillar chapter 4 verse number 24 they have to get paid its wages okay to get paid for what in the same verse it says they see they did not post the whole verse it says for you enjoy yet okay enjoy what it the woman is not it you know what I mean when you say you enjoy yet okay enjoy what do we call women it what do you think guys what is it that it goes to what her vagina for you enjoy yet you pay her wages let us go to Quran chapter 4 you see here they post for us little part of the verse not the whole part let us go to chapter 4 verse number 24 <clears throat> Okay, it says, uh, so that seek them with your worth. Huh? And here they say, honest with luck. What honest? I mean, and then uh, seek them, contact, give them their partition as a duty. What is that? Let us change the translation. I mean, the translation has nothing to do with the verse. Let us go to different translator. You see right away when we, we change the translation, the translation change everything that's why i say you know you cannot learn islam really from somebody you don't know arabic very well right yeah the word for marriage is zawaj zawaj you know zawaj this is the tradition the traditional language word you know okay uh or to say the official one and here you will see okay seek uh, marriage uh by money Bridal money given to the by the husband to the wife in the time of the marriage That's not true And look from your property desiring chastity not com committing illegal sexual intercourse So those who of whom you enjoyed Sexual relationship give them their wages. So you see here. They try, try to fabricate the translation, but we, we get the point so when your money is due, when the money is due to the women, here it says in Arabic, for you enjoy yet, enjoy her vagina. Here in the translation, they translate it as what? You enjoy their sexual relationship because they're trying to hide the ugliness. Enjoy it, it goes to enjoy their vagina. So because you enjoy their vagina, you have to pay them. This is why a Muslim man, if he marry a woman temporarily, or not temporarily he don't enjoy yet he don't pay do you know let us say you know because look, okay I'm, uh, I'm i have a contract with the women she's supposed to have a contract sexual contract of being my wife but she did not go to the bed then i don't have to pay so the do is do only after she take off her panty and then we enjoy yet and then she can get paid now we go to back to the Muslim website so here the first pillar that you have you have to give them their appointed wages because you enjoy it and now look guys read carefully with me I'm not the one saying that I'm not the one saying that this is more in the front of you all right uh, <clears throat> Are all employed the, the women <laughs> the women she is an employee <laughs> she is employed 
let us let us go down a little bit because the article is wrong right long um look guys read with me carefully does it say as it is a rented women does it say muta consider as a kind of rental or i'm lying do you see it guys does it say muta is a kind of rental and she is a rented woman Who is a Muslim want to say something to us? Who is a Muslim want to say something to us? Rented women. So you want to marry a man? He believe that you are rented women. If you tell me that your husband he don't believe, he's, he, so why you call him a Muslim then? Why he claim that he's a Muslim? Why he call himself a Muslim? Okay, call yourself Hindu. Uh, say I'm an atheist. The second you call him a Muslim, this is his belief. So stop being stupid. Rented women. You are not a wife in Islam. You are rented women. I hope those who make videos, I mean, uh, out of my videos, they can cut the videos and make it short and like, you know, cut this part and show everybody. And maybe I should make a short video uh, about this topic, rented women. Maybe tomorrow I will make a video about rented women. So where is where is the marriage? Where is the you see marriage in Christianity is a holy relationship. Marriage in Islam does not exist. You are a rented woman, and you get paid for what you are rented for. That's why the man he can text you a message and he divorces you because he you are just an employee. So how you can share? family with somebody believe you are nothing but a rented woman and anytime he can replace you you get older you know a man okay well i marry now uh you see a man he can uh, uh he marry you when you were 20 you are young beautiful etc and then after a few years you gave birth and then your body changed and etc and then he find a new rental woman that's it the only reason for a Muslim man to stay with a one woman if he cannot afford it, this is what the Quran say, not me. Correct? If he can afford it, he have the right to replace you. Like now, there is a bigger TV, you know, 65 inch, 70 inch. Why you want to stay with the one is 20 uh, 20 inch? <laughs> this is the mentality. So, how we can consider this as a marriage? What you will do if you are married to a Muslim, you think you are married, and the guy, he decides to invite th three girls he just married, uh, and he want to have sex with them in your house. What you can do about it? Nothing. Nothing. What you call the police? They would. They, they <laughs> Even if you call the police to say, my husband is beating me and he's raping me, they will go and take his side. Do you know in the Middle East that if a woman, she leave the house of the husband without his permission, the man he can call the police and you will become wanted in the whole country you will stop in any checkpoint any airport and they will put the cups in your hands and they will bring you home like a goat this is called Ta, which means the the house of obedience law the house of obedience the man he can arrest you he called the police my wife she left she left me okay the police right away they will make a report what's her name give us her information and then she will become wanted as if she is really a big fat criminal and the second you get arrested they will take you like a goat and you will be humiliated in the front of the public because everybody will disrespect you because you're a bad woman you're disgusting it doesn't matter if your husband beat you or whatever he is doing still you have to obey and you have to stay so i don't know i don't know i mean if i if what i say, i can show you tons of things i mean you can search and search uh, but don't be fooled by a woman she say to you i married a muslim man he's a nice guy and, and, and okay let us see after a few years let us see let us see for how long this nice guy will be there hmm? uh, 
Uh, any, uh, and then by the way here they continue explaining the formula the formula there's a formula what the formula you have to make a declaration since it is a contract uh, do you see the word contract did I say to you there is no marriage it's a contract did I say contract it's a contract what is contract contract for sex rent she's rented women you know we did not make it up. it's in front of you huh she is rental <laughs> I mean even the words they use is really beyond imagination like rental muta consider as a kind of rental I mean what kind of a cult this cult is and now you have to make a declaration declaration for the rental you rented this woman you should tell okay I rent you so the woman she says okay I agree to rent me Yeah, they say to me, you are a liar. <laughs> In the definition of rental, <laughs> I mean, look how deep this cult is. They want to give you now the definition. Okay, they told you now the wife you get, she is a rental. So shouldn't we tell you what rental mean? Definition for it. All right. Yeah, yeah, the word nikah is the F word, is exactly the F word. Even Muhammad, he used it. You see, in the hadith, Muhammad, a man he committed, uh, you know, sex. So he did, he said to him, Did you touch her? Did you uh, wink to her? Did you kiss her? Or you F her? And let me show you the word in English, in Arabic. All right, here we go. This is the word in, in, in Arabic as it is in the screen. Did you F her? If you go and read the translation in the English, they don't say, did you F her? It, it, you, you can, they, they translate as, did you have sexual intercourse? But he did not say, did you have sexual intercourse? This is the word F. Ask any Arab guy. Did you F her? All right. So you rent the women, and now you made an agreement, but this agreement have the conditions still. You have there is a formula. You have to make declaration for the contract of sex, because she is rental. Yes, but you have to announce it, and she have to accept, and she have to announce how much. The person, a man can be etc. Contract or only with Muslim or one of the people of the book. Look how nice they are. They can do contract of muta. You want to be rented? Who is a who is a, a, a Jewish woman or a Christian woman here? She like to be rented by a Muslim woman. Look, there, there's an there, there's an empty uh, uh, you know available. We have vacancies for jobs. Look how nice Islam. They can hire only only a Muslim woman. Or a Christian or Jews for this job to be rented. I mean, what do you want more? What's wrong with you? It's a great job opportunity. Two hours sex, you get paid. And by the way, there's no need for divorce. Before the man he put his pant on, the divorce is initiated because in this contract, you have to say for how long. This is why they are coming, like here, they say the person, and then you will see. They say to you, uh, the timing, you see, the time period, you see the muddha, the time period, which means you have to agree, both of you, for how long? So if you agree, like let's say you are going in the elevator, and uh, you are a male, and she is a female, and you both of you are Muslims, and you like her, she is beautiful, you can do muta. Especially if you live in the Middle East, the elevator can 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 lose electricity for ten you know ten hours. So you say to her, "Can I do muta with you?" And then she say, "How much you will pay?" Um, you say, "Um, you don't you don't really look good, so I will give you a, a price of a hamburger, five dollars." And then you have to say for how long? You see, Islam is a very much it's a very decent religion. 
You cannot just say, I want to have sex with you and I will pay you. No, you have to say for how long. And then the women, she have to repeat after you and she say, I agree. Read with me. Guys, read, read, read for me. I'm not saying that. This is in front of you. Imam was once asked if it's possible to conclude a contract of muta for one or two hours. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, um, uh, okay. One or two hours, and they call it marriage. They they call it marriage. And look at the answer of the Abdul, the Sheikh, the Imam. He says, No time limits. Which means you can make it two hours or one hour, doesn't matter. You can make it five, fifteen minutes. You can make it a day. This is a decision you make. All right. So, a uh, Sheikh uh, uh, al-Ansari, uh, in all the hadith, indicate that it's principle for for the agreed upon time period either to be joined in the moment or concluding a contract to be postponed. <laughs> Not now. I'm busy now. So our muta will start tomorrow at six o'clock. <laughs> I I love it. Mm. <coughs> you want to contact me? Uh, people, they will post my uh, pal talk. You can contact me there. So, I mean, you want to marry a Muslim? Oh, go ahead. Good luck. You know, for me, I do my duty to share my knowledge and foolishness. And here now, the payment. They call it the door. By the way, it's not called the door. It says the ujur, the wages. Even in their translation, if you go up, it says wages. You see? What door? Wages. It is literally wages. It's what the Quran says in Arabic. Ujurahun. So after all of this, you discuss how much the money she will get paid. The contract must mention a door of known, the wages of or a known property, whether in cash or kind of whose amount is safe from increase or decrease. Like, come on, we have to make an agreement. I will give you 10 watermelon. Those 10 watermelon is for you if you take off your panty. So to make it simple, when you want to have a relationship, you have first to find someone he have the same definition for life around you definition very simple i mean when we say when we say this is right and this is wrong what is right for him is very wrong for you so how you can marry this man are you getting my point in order to have relationship to live together even if you are a believer or not believer this is your business maybe you're an atheist but living with somebody, you have to reach an agreement. In the beginning, a man, a Muslim man, he will say whatever you want. Oh, don't worry. I am uh, I am very open-minded. You can wear a short skirt. And slowly, 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 he start putting pressure on you, but being aggressive on you, showing you he don't like what you are doing, so he will force you to change the way you dress. And after that, he will ask you to change the way you talk. And after that, he will ask you to convert to Islam. So what was calling himself open-minded, uh, he will end to be something else. But anyway, I think there's many women, they like to be rented. So it's a good opportunity, make money. You know, I remember once a stupid woman, and I sorry to say the word stupid, but she is. She, she contacted me in Paltok. And she said she married to an old... Uh, guy I think it was in Kuwait very old man he's like 95 97 years old and she is in here at 20 30 something like that I, I forgot the details really this is a long time ago and she said to me uh, uh, according to Sharia law how much I will get <laughs> if he die stupid woman I told her nothing she said what do you mean I said you are not a Muslim you get nothing 
in Sharia law, a wife, she is not a Muslim, she inherits zero. Totally zero. And by the way, even if you inherit, you inherit nothing anyway. I mean, maybe he's rich, but still, you have many wives and you have tons of children. Uh, the male children, they will have the big fortune of the money. And then the wives, they will get a little anyway. But if, because you are not a Muslim, you will get nothing. Zero. A non-believer cannot inherit a believer. That is an Islamic law. So I hope people will are learning, and you know I do my best, and people they are free to do whatever they want. Right? You see, always when you talk about marriage, you have, you know, like maybe I should make a different video. Maybe I should finish this one and start a new one. You see, the problem is most of men and women they are not mature. I will try to explain to you with my limited English because this is a very deep topic and you know sometime a lot of time actually I find my I mean I want to say things but I don't know how to express it because my English is not really too much helping me uh, maturity is not about you look like a male and you have a male private part and you can have orgasm and same for the women Maturity is not about you having breast and you know, but a human being is very silly and very shallow So they go, you know, usually people they meet maybe in night club or a place and you know The guy is cool. He gave her a drink and he is funny and he is a cute and then next we go to the bed And even I did not ask him his name yet and then supposedly they have a relationship I mean, this is the most stupid thing often happen between people so you meet a man and then supposedly suddenly you say you know what I cannot really live without you uh, We want to get married But still you know nothing about this person He know nothing about you because all the interest in the beginning. It's about having fun You know what it's called relationship like you know friends with benefit and then a friend with benefit became uh, uh, became uh, or become uh, marriage but you do not know him yet because you never have a serious discussion. You never have serious topic. You never have serious life You have fun life we go to the club we have we'll go to the dinner we go to the picnic We go and Fred is inviting her here and there so it's fun to be together, but this is the fun part And then when you get involved with real life Then you notice that this person you get married from is not what you think is far away from your dreams but he was the same as before but because you were a fool and you never asked a serious question before you were busy asking him what the music you like which actor you like <laughs> i mean all of you you know what i'm talking about right silly questions i mean what, what that will make a difference i mean what so they ask all kind of stupid questions, but they never go deep to inspire the the personality of this person. What uh, what what is your favorite wine? Oh, I like that wine. I mean, what a, what a conversation! Supposedly now this is a deep conversation. So when when you are shallow, you get a shallow marriage. And you get a shallow relationship because it was shallow it is stay shallow will end shallow and shallow is very simple to be destroyed when little wind come you have no roots the wind will unblock your plant so easy I don't know if if what I said is clear or not red rabbit saying can God die CP a hey, red rabbit this is stupid of you and uh, this is very normal from a Muslim to be to be like that because when you say to me can God die you are saying that God he is God if he did not die correct guys is that correct let's go move to this Abdul let me teach you how to get Abdul busted you see I you know I never saw uh, 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 those people they have low IQ 
The second you say to me, can God die? You just said, Jesus is God. And I will tell you why, Abdul. In your religion, Jesus did not die. So I want to ask you, why Jesus did not die? I'm using your logic. So in Islam, Jesus then must be God because he did not die. After 2,000 years of Christ was exist in Israel, you Muslims believe he's alive. So this is how shallow they are and we are talking about shallow You know one of the things I fear in my life is stupidity. I don't know. I feel myself sometimes I want to vomit I Cannot imagine myself with somebody is stupid Actually, maybe this is why I'm still not married. I fear stupidity Because you see uh, there's something happening around you something broke you can fix it you can change it but what you can do with the a wife or a husband he's stupid look at this guy imagine you marry this guy imagine you marry a guy who have little brain like this jesus how jesus can be god can god die <laughs> you abdul you muslims you yourself you believe that if a human being he die he will be tortured in the grave now when i ask you you are dead and you will be tortured <laughs> stupid you're dead so how you believe that a human being die and that will make him not god but yet he's dead and he is going to be tortured and not only that there's 99 snakes have nine heads they will go inside your anus i don't know how big your anus is but i would like to see how big the garage will be in the judgment day and this is one of the reasons muslim don't dare to debate me because they are no match They are shallow, shallow in their knowledge, shallow in their thinking, and shallow in their, uh, uh, you know, the way they, they present even their case. Right? So, you know, always when you want to, you know, this is my advice for everybody. And, you know, you don't have to listen to me. I mean, you maybe uh, maybe you know, know, know better. Uh, I'm not here to tell you what to do I'm just sharing my opinion that don't be shallow when you meet somebody otherwise you will have a shallow relationship even if he is a man of God even if he's a Christian so what you have to go deep you have to in you know the, the, like uh, uh, ask serious questions about serious matters uh, even speak about politics even speak about uh, uh, issues happening in real life don't waste your time talking about the music and uh, uh, you know silly stuff and you know I mean that that will not take you anywhere you have to really to see how much you both uh, how much deep you are and how much you are in agreement or disagreement and what is uh, what is the biggest disagreement between you and how serious it is same as what is the biggest agreement between you and how serious it is right watch my blood pressure Oh, okay. Uh, so this is my advice for everybody. Don't go by the look. There's many people, you know, you know, uh, you know. When I when I was a kid, I was a teenage, and then I saw a girl. She was so beautiful, very very beautiful, and I want to talk to her. You know, a kid like a teenage. I don't know. I was like maybe 15, 16 years old. And all all time I'm talking about her like tomorrow. I'm going to talk to her tomorrow. I'm going to talk to her You cannot believe how beautiful she is and then the second day come and I decide to talk to her and I went and the second she start talking and I saw how silly she is I Could not believe it even at that time. I'm just a kid I could not believe it that I wasted the day yesterday thinking about how I'm going to make an excuse to talk to her Silly, stupid, um, you know, shallow. Uh, I mean, pff, ah, she's so beautiful. So beauty can disappear. Beauty disappears fast. And that is natural to happen. 
So it can disappear because the person he's try he start as you know talking ugly, acting ugly, uh, being bad. You you forget about the beauty. The beauty is something you see first impression. You will be impressed by it. Okay, she is so beautiful, or maybe he's so handsome. But then after that, you don't see that. After that, you see just the person, whoever he is. The beauty will be normal. Even a person like in the language today, they call someone is beautiful, somebody is ugly. But I don't believe in that because ugly can be beautiful too. So you see someone first time, oh, he don't look good. But you start talking to this person, man, this person really good to talk to. I enjoy his company or her company. So the beauty in the beginning maybe attract you, but it can be fake, and it's you know it will will later will 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 destroy your life. So try to be more deep and not to judge as you know as they say they say you know you judge the book by its cover and there is many people actually they buy the cover of the book they don't buy the book this is why if you go and watch tv you will see a bunch of uh, girls wearing short skirt you know i don't see any women there she don't look good i mean look at them uh, open fox news what is that it's like a show in the morning a bunch of girls wearing a very short skirt they are blonde and they are tall and they are and even their teeth is perfect the, their eyelashes is like an umbrella their hair is wow i mean and their smile is is is, is there even before there's a joke fake smile fake face fake because people they learn to be fake they like to see something fake you know we we used to this culture fake is appealing right fake is appealing and by the way, maybe if you stay, like if you talk to me um, in person, you will not like what I talk because I'm a serious person. Um, and I, may, I can be very funny too, but still you will not like because it, it put too much pressure on you. You know, because even my joke is going to turn to be something that will make you think. And thinking is very, I mean, it's not good for many people. Why I want to think? I mean, thinking? Why I want to think? And you know, sometimes foolish person, foolish man, they will be perfect with foolish women. Try to find your match. But the problem then, foolish man, foolish wife, we will have foolish family. That will be a disaster. <laughs> right? <clears throat> anyway, uh, you got to give people chance. You cannot automatically assume. No, I'm not at. I'm not. Did you guys? So this is what you understand from me, uh, Mika. This is what you understand from my speech. Okay, let me tell you what Mika you did. There's a Saudi guy. He went to a class about philosophy. An Arab guy like me, you know. And we are Arab. We are very good in philosophy. We are the one who made philosophy, actually. Just joking. So the guy he went to the class to learn about philosophy, logic. The class that day it was about logic. So uh, the Arab guy, like me, let us say it's me, so nobody will feel offended, said to the teacher, what is logic? The teacher said, uh, well, logic is to know something from something. The guy, he said, I don't understand. What does that mean? He said, well, I will ask you a question now. And from that question, we will see how we can find more information about you. I said, okay, that's interesting. So the teacher said to the man, to the student, uh, do you have a uh, chain in your home? Chain. Uh, the guy, he said, yes. He said, uh-huh. Now, as long as you have a chain, that's mean you have a dog. The guy, he looked at the teacher like, wow, yeah, true, I have a dog. How do you know? He said, as long as you have a dog, that's mean you have a big yard, you have a garden. He said, this is true. Yes. He said, as long as you have a chain, you have a dog, you have a yard, and yard and garden, that's mean you have a nice house, big house. He said, yeah. He said, as long as you have a dog, you have a chain, you have a yard, you have a big house, that house needs a lot of care. And that's mean your mother, she is a very good woman taking care of the house, such a house, big house like this. The, the guy was like, wow. And now what he learned, that because of the chain, he was able to learn 
that his mother is a good woman logic so now this guy he want to practice uh, he want to practice the logic which he'll just learn from the teacher so a good woman according to the logic can be known if you have a chain or not so he went in the street he said to a guy first one he met hey 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 do you have a chain you have a chain the guy he said no he said okay your mother is a whore because his mother she don't have a chain this is what he lost this is what he learned from the logic and this is what you did make in mecca from all the speech i made you come to the conclusion that i was talking about the chain and the one who don't have a chain is a take it easy change your drink uh i don't know it's <laughs> Uh, you see like don't be shallow you are not listening to me you are not even listening i'm trying to explain in details and still you don't understand what i'm saying so what i would what i would say what i would do so now we go and say okay christian prince he said uh if you talk about the music that's mean you are shallow no no i did not say that talk about the music nothing wrong about the music why not don't be shallow We are saying you have to dig deep and try to understand the personality of the person ask about something serious speak about divorce speak about children speak about how family can work and try to see really a serious opinion not just uh, trying to say something in front of you talk about a person who have a problem let's see what this opinion of this guy about this problem how he will solve it if he was in the case and then you will know what he would do with you if both of you became in such a situation Right. Yes, uh, a princess. She is asking. Oh, this is not for me. She is asking if a Muslim is if the prophet he uh, he came to your house and he liked your wife. What you will do? Actually, according to the Muslims, according to Sharia law, if the prophet his eyes fall into a woman and he like to have her, the husband he must divorce her immediately. I'm married. No, thanks God, I'm not. All right. Jesus is a messenger before Abraham was. I am Jesus. Yeah, going to convert me. I don't know what Enzo is trying to say to us. <clears throat> Yeah, I fear stupidity because there's no solution for stupidity. You see, there's there's ignorance and there's stupidity. Ignorance, we can fix it. Stupidity, we cannot. You know what I mean, guys? Like, for me, I am ignorant in English. As an example, I make a lot of mistakes in sometimes pronouncing or grammar or, you know, I'm ignorant in English. That can be fixed. You can study more and more, you know, practice, etc. It can be fixed. But stupid person, you cannot make him... Like in China, they say... He left as a donkey. He never came back as a horse. Yeah, how you can make a donkey a horse? You cannot. All right. Same time, there is there is a, there is something always you have to uh, think about it seriously. Never ever have a relationship with someone is selfish. Someone is selfish, he, he will never love you. That's it, selfish. Man or woman doesn't matter. He don't even love his parents. He don't even love his sister. He don't, he don't love the whole world. He love himself. Selfish person is the most disgusting human being ever you can be with. Never. Never, ever. Be with a person he think about the whole world as me everything is about him or about her that will be one of the biggest mistake you do someone he believe i love me 
He will never love you. She will never love you. They are selfish. And there is many ways to know if a person is selfish or not. All right? And I'm not saying anything to insult anyone. I'm just sharing with you what I believe. Take it easy. That's why I say uh, my uh, the way I talk sometimes it can be, um, you know, harsh in some people. But uh, the one who really try to help you is the one who will speak harsh to you. Not the one who you know say things you like to hear. Uh, this is the problem in this life. You know, people they say to you things you like to hear, right? It's like imagine you dress nicely and you are going to a wedding party, okay? And you are wearing a nice suit. Then you meet the first friend, the second friend, the third friend, and all of them shake hands with you. How are you? But then you will go in the bathroom and you notice that there is a poop of a bird in, the sh in your shoulder, and not even one of them told you that you have something there or in your head. That's me. None of them is your friends, correct? If they care for you. They will tell you right away, hey, there's something wrong there, fix it. But they will not tell you because they don't care for you. Actually, they are trying to make you look bad. Right? It's like two females. One of them, she is jealous from the other female. The other female, she is, let us say, she, whatever, she have something special. So she asks her, do this dress look good in me? Because she hates you and that dress is ugly. She would say, it looks so wonderful, so good. But if she really care for you, she will say, this is bad dress. You don't look good in it. Right? Why love CP and Jesus? Jesus is above. I don't know what does that mean. And why you want to love CP anyway? And I'm no one. How you can love me? I have nobody loves me anyway. You see, you don't even know what the word love. You are attracted to maybe me talking, saying things to you, funny, you laugh, etc. You enjoy. So you love things about me, but you don't love me because you do not know me. And there again, we have to be, don't be shallow. Don't be shallow. You know, you love an actor because he is in that movie, you know, it sounds good, like, you know, I like you. But if you, maybe if you sit with him for five minutes, you get disgusted. Right? Anyway, uh, and actually, this is my problem with people because I am honest with them. I say I speak my mind, and people don't like that. You have to be a hypocrite if you want to be liked by people. Um, the more you are a hypocrite, the more people like you. That's how life is. Listen to the queen speak. <laughs> uh, don't make me speak now about the queen and her family, corrupt family. Anyway. Uh, language for me is not really a problem because as long as I can deliver my my, my ideas um you know it's okay uh, for sure I wish I can like my my skills is better because a lot of time I find myself very limited I'm using like maybe maybe my English is comparing to yours you guys who they are born in the West etc maybe maybe I'm like three percent to you in the ability of talking expressing yourself but imagine even with my three percent still I can make a you know the discussion come to be clear I mean most of it mostly right so even though it's very limited still thank God it's working yeah I am an ex-muslim no I'm not I wasn't I never been stupid to be a Muslim for a second how you can be a Muslim how somebody can believe that God will make your penis endless I mean this is not even smart okay I'm so uh, you are six foot two tall, and then your penis is in China. 
okay and and you will be lucky actually if your penis did not go in the jungle of Brazil do you know what they have there those ants they will eat it alive they will think it's a soldier so I don't know how a person can be a Muslim I don't know how, how you can accept such an idea I mean this is silly a human being is very shallow or what what if your penis go in the Amazon River and you have those uh, fish who eat uh, what they call them those fish scary fish I mean I don't want to think about it this is very painful in a second it's going to disappear and Allah will make it longer and it's going to eat it again and Allah will make it longer right no no uh, yeah par parna parna Peran per parana I don't know what the name I mean uh, yeah especially in the movie they make them like dangerous I mean the idea itself and the women her vagina is endless too what is that is that the tunnel between France and England? Even that is like two hours. The vagina is in this. So what does that mean? Is that is that uh, like uh, what they call those space uh, holes? You know the space black hole. The vagina is in this. What is that the black hole in the space? I mean, I don't know. This so stupidity. How you can be a Muslim? <laughs> yeah, because in Arabic it says, uh, 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 and which means a vagina which fit for that. It's endless. As long as the, the, the penis is endless, it says the vagina fit for that endless penis. So it have to be endless too. So endless vagina, endless penis. Okay, so the black hole in the space, they, now we know where they are. They are there. Women, they have them. Right? No, Allah is not about he love a human sexual. There's no Allah. This is Muhammad. He knew how corrupt a human being is. And he knew how the, 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 the devil come to you always through uh, the windows and doors. What do you like? You like food? You like sex you like money what do you want even if you like God he will come to you through God the devil he always isn't it the Messiah he says to you be aware of false prophet they will come to you in the clothes of a sheep this will come to who to the Christians because the Christians they love God right so he will not come to them from the door of uh, sex and etc no he will come to you from the from the door of God he will dress as a sheep because you like the sheep you know it looked decent beautiful honest so he will dress as a sheep so what 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 the messiah is saying that's the the the, the satan he transform himself in the way you like he can come to you in politics like you know you go and vote for abortion killing babies you know and they convince you that this is the right of every woman. I mean, what this this what about a human being? So we defend the rights of animals from being killed, but we kill babies. So always the devil he try to 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 make what you will do acceptable. Right? So he come to you from many uh, many doors, from many ways, or in many 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 uh uh, forms and Islam is one of them you know uh, uh, the devil in Islam you know he tried to present himself that he's God who wants you to believe in one God and uh, who wants you to be a better person but at the same time go and kill them wherever you find them right how you are God uh, and the black dog is the devil I mean you see uh, like if, if you think about this story here are you guys enjoying the night with me here and maybe there's the people who they are in in Asia they are like it's morning for them you know when Muhammad says as an example that the black dog is the devil think about it you know try to be I mean, maybe you are not used to think deeply, but try to think about it just beyond that. It's stupid to say that, right? 
it's more than stupid this is something really serious because if I can make you believe to hate an animal because of his color that's not only it's this is not about stupid no more this is about how dangerous this cult is because here you decided to kill your brain and to kill what God gave you as a gift which is called logic use it think and you decide to accept a person saying to you that the black dog is the devil why is the why is the devil because it's black why is not the, the yellow dog or oh, what about the, the red dog what about the white dog no only the black dog is the devil so many of us you know they've been they, you you've been fed some information during your lifetime like the, the crusade the crusade are bad people they are the devil right because just the second you call the crusade but the crusade they were fighting back they were not attacking they were attacked it was the Christians who were attacked but on the schools always they attack the crusade so you grow up you grow up and the, the crusade or is the devil same here the black dog is the devil you don't even want to think you don't even want to search you don't want to study okay let us see let us see how the black dog is the devil is that true is that possible or we just take things as people they say to us just because somebody said something and we take it and this guy supposedly they call him prophet right so many of us we are victims of accepting what people says and we take it as a, let us say uh, a scale of life the scale of life is what is what somebody said and we don't want to think about it like somebody is a racist he you know he don't like black people so he starts saying bad things about black people but is that true well there's black people they are very good and there's black people they are bad but this is the same for the white people too so why we are saying the black people are not good then that's not right same as we cannot say the, the white people are bad or good so we have to say we have to say what is right here it's a mindset forced by religion and then you block the idea of studying and researching to see if this is true because the one who said that is a holy prophet do you believe in the black hole or real i have no idea my friend i did not see one if i go there one day i will take a selfie i will send it to you all right like you know uh, uh, uh they say uh, they claim they i don't know maybe it's true i don't know maybe well but there here there's a question what they call the black hole <laughs> they call it the black hole because simply they can see nothing so how you can describe it if you can see nothing <laughs> you know what i mean i don't know for me it's not uh, too much convincing as a uh, like you know like uh, always when they present to you even science most of the science you have about the space is a theory it's not really a science most of it for sure not all of it but theory is a theory until it's proven to be true but in our culture today sadly if something coming from a scientist who work in NASA that's it it must be serious. not this is not a theory it is science that fact no all of science is based on theories you see when uh, when when you wanna you wanna uh, uh, like I make a theory I can pass and go to the space that it was a theory for a long time and then I was able to do that so the theory became the theory became right that became true so most of the science the or the origin of it is a theory how we can uh, let us find out how this work it's a practice so when they speak about something they did not go there they did not really practice it or see it or go inside it then until that day we cannot confirm to be true or not and i don't know if you understand my logic or not <clears throat> holes are always dark not necessarily you see again the color can be can be fooling us <laughs> you see one one thing about the the like uh Colors, colors is deceiving. By the way, uh, 
I don't know if you study colors when you see somebody is white doesn't mean he's white actually he's black because white is the color your body reflect usually it's a it's a color you don't have so if you see something red that's mean he is not red or the color is, is not really red he is not painted by red he's, he's painted by a color suck all the colors reflect that one so always we are being deceived by knowledge uh, about colors or, or or what we see around us and seeing not only not always is true seeing can be deceiving all of you you know something is called mirage right if you drive in the desert if you drive in the desert you do you see you really you see water you know you see really your eyes showing you water you see it all the way you drive in the street you see water 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 but there's no water so sometimes seeing can be deceiving, right? People wish to call Zach and Naik. Well, if we call Zach and Naik, he will he will talk about the black uh, holes and the space and uh, and then he will uh, you know he will convert you to Islam. Yeah. Doesn't the Quran say free slaves? And this is a good question. No, the Quran doesn't say really free slave to free them. The Quran says uh, it's a penalty. Let me explain to you. What do you like most of your property? What the Arab like most of their property? They're slaves. So I will make you free a slave if you do this. If you break the law of Allah. If you if you kill a Muslim. So this is was a penalty, not a reward for the slave. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? Guys, do you understand me? Like I say to you, if you if you cross and the light was red, I will force you to free a slave. So I'm I'm not saying free slaves for the sake of the slaves. I'm saying free the slave for the sake of enforcing the law which you hate. So, if you kill a Muslim, okay, free a slave. So now you don't not kill a Muslim. But that is a dangerous too, because you free a slave, we capture them again. There's many hadith of Muhammad about people they free slaves, and Muhammad he slayed them again, right? Uh, Sahih Bukhari is full of them. Uh, so what the point of freeing a slave, and then you will bring more slaves? Muhammad he did not abolish the slavery war. You know, he he approved it. The Quran says even you can rape them. And Muhammad himself didn't he accept slaves' gifts from the ruler of uh, Egypt or Alexandria? Yeah, he did. Maria the Coptia and her cousin and her sister and a bunch of people. He accept gifts as a human. Right. No, here. How many Jesus? How many slaves he have? How many slaves he have? Never, never. Okay. What about Paul? Uh, what about Peter? What about John? All the Messiah and his apostle. None of them have slaves. All in Islam, Muhammad and his companion, all of them they own slaves and buy thousands. So if Islam is against slavery, then okay, why they have slaves then? <laughs> we attack the enemies, we take their women, we kill the men, we take the children, we divide the children between us as slaves, and then they give us lecture about we are against slavery. Look at this. I heard that Allah Messenger, I heard uh, Atiyah, etc., etc., were presented to the Allah Messenger in the day of Quraid. Uh, uh, Those who have a pubic hair had a growing were be killed. So now Muhammad attacked this tribe, they are Jews. He made the men strip and the children too. 
and any child he have little hair around his pubic area he will be slaughtered do you see it and the rest they made them slaves you see here they says let us go let us go to the to be alive not to go to be free all right I'm fine the hadith anyway I think we have enough for today so guys did you learn something good I hope people will download the video because we are not going to keep it long in my page and I hope yesterday did you enjoy the time with the uh, David Wood yesterday was it good did you like it you know, many of you they text me they says why you don't be there you don't be there okay he invited me I went there to make you happy uh, and always you know when somebody speak about something uh, a foolish man after he speak for two minutes you will you will notice he's, he's a fool actually always always stay away from a person he don't talk because there's no way you will know if he is smart or foolish or stupid. The more you talk, the more you get busted. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, and uh, I'm a Aluan, you know, uh, I'm a Aluan. Uh, <laughs> you know what? Uh, uh, Isa he is asking me that what if somebody have a, he's a, he's a color blind? I don't know if I told you the story once. Uh, once uh, a, a priest uh, this is an Orthodox Church you know I, I visit many churches and I do seminars everywhere uh, this priest he called me he said there's a guy he come to our church every Sunday after the service you know after the service like the churches they have like a coffee people sit together you know so this guy this is a, this is an Arab Christian church this guy is an atheist he come to the church and he start making fun of those nice Christians and they are not rude you know, they don't know what to do with him. So the, the priest, he said, you know, there's a guy, he come, and I know that nobody really can, can deal with him as you do. But can you do, come next uh, weekend? I said, well, I really, I will be busy, but just in, just to, to help you, no problem. If he is there, call me, and I will come, which means I will come really after the service because I have a room to open, etc. So anyway, I, I uh, uh, he called me he said the guy is there so I went and he did not talk in the beginning he did not say anything and then suddenly uh, he said eh, you Christians are really funny uh, you want to convince me that Jesus he put some mud in the eye of somebody and he made him see <laughs> And imagine he's saying that in a church. I mean, not inside the church. I mean, in the building, like where they drink coffee and tea. And those Christians, they are nice people. They don't, uh, you know, they are not rude. Uh, so I said to him, uh, I was waiting for him to talk. You know, I'm there just for him. But he have no idea. So I said, okay, well, uh, can you tell me what do you do for a living? Because before they told me he's an eye doctor. That's why I asked him. Can you tell me? You know, I know he's an eye, you know. He said, okay, he said, I am an eye doctor. Why? I said, well, it's really funny because as I know that eye doctors, all what they do, they put sand in the top of the eyes of somebody and he will see better. He said, what? He said, don't you eye doctors, that's what you do? You put sands on the eyes of people and they see better? He said, yeah, but this is a different story. This is different. I said, hold on. If you exist 2,000 years ago, and you say to somebody, I'm going to put sands in the front of your eyes, and I will make you see better. Don't you think he will think that you are crazy and stupid? He said, yeah. So this is exactly what you are doing.
and you look around him uh, and you see the silence the people are quiet waiting for him what he will say you know uh, he said um, yeah actually you are right like um, he will accuse me to be stupid and crazy I said and you are <laughs> and since then he never come to the church he called the priest he says that guy who was then there is he there is he coming is he still coming to the church he's not coming no more he called the priest he said this guy is still coming is still he coming is there he's coming you know yeah no he's not a, he's a atheist he's an atheist yeah but I mean the logic you can use your logic but sometimes always you have to use the logic of the person to get him busted we as a Christian when we talk to people we use our logic like a guy a Muslim like you saw the Muslim when he come he starts saying to me Jesus die how he can be God right I did not use my logic I use his logic you use their logic you will torture them you use your logic you're wasting your time they cannot deny their logic they, they just use their logic they use it so try always not to use your own logic use their all right yeah and you know I was nice in the, the the priest he asked me to be very I mean he, he told me please I like I want you to get him busted but be nice you know we are Christians this is why I stopped going to the ABN TV ABN TV each time I want to go on TV the owner of the TV he speak to me please uh, Christian Prince please be nice to the guy you know we are Christians and we need to be you know and okay I know give me a headache like 15 minutes giving me a lecture about how to be nice with the guys why you are bringing me I'm not nice like they want me to get the guy busted with by being nice how we can do that All right how often you do deprief yourself from this logic will depend on the logic you know sometimes logic is a, uh, logic is a good word but sometimes describes something foolish as we uh, as we mentioned the story of the chain you remember the guy who asked uh, do you have a chain you know so logic is a as a as a definition is good but uh, the contain sometimes is stupid depend on the person you see the logic of a muslim is what that he prayed to Allah five times, he hid he hid the, the infidels, he go to heaven, or he go and kill himself or kill others, and then he go to heaven and Allah will give him virgins and they have their legs open. And logic, this is logic, but this is stupid logic. Right? There's a logic, and this is there is stupid logic. Everybody have his own logic in life. Uh, well, he can call me maybe next time. Now I don't feel like talking to any Abdul. Everybody, he think he have uh, the right logic. Every one of us. Like, uh, even uh, you know, even when you eat, you have your logic of food. All your life is based on your own logic, but th that doesn't mean it's really a logic. It's this is your logic Which means the way of reasoning, you know uh, And this is why you always you have to try this is why we're talking about not to be shallow try to understand the logic of the person From his logic you will know how smart how fool he is how stupid he is how you know you want to meet me why what is your logic Malika why you want to meet me see here we have a logic why you want to meet me that is not logical for me for you it's a logic you have your own reason for me I don't see a reason right House been okay. House explain 355. Maybe later, you know, we can today. We have like a long topic and we are done. Um, thank you, Diana.
I, I don't and like you know sometime uh, maybe because like uh, sometime the English is limited so people misunderstood me uh, if you ever misunderstood me please ask me to repeat again or to explain more what I can do I mean we don't have a, I don't have if I if I do my program in Arabic for sure I would do one million times better actually there was a, a you know Arabic rooms they asked me not to speak you know chat rooms they said to me we talk they, they run away the Muslim they run away because in Arabic I'm like 100 time more powerful it's my first language in English you find yourself very much limited very much actually uh, but now it's a lot better than before before even like I want to show you something in the screen we don't have translation you know when I start doing teaching in the internet there is no translation of Sahir Bukhari all those websites you can't find anything so now we are like we are lucky we have you know those websites even the translation is false but still we can at least we can show you we can share with you uh, not long time ago we have zero of this and the Muslims they, they say this uh, they see he's showing you in Arabic because he's lying for those who know me for for long uh, the Iranian TV they have a program about those who they are anti-islam and they choose my video from pal to, from from uh, YouTube uh, as a vid as a, as the the dangerous people the most dangerous person uh, if you watch that video you will see I was even recording the, the, the computer with my camcorder you know yeah you, you know those uh, old camcorder camera you know so I'm holding the camera in my hand imagine and I have the screen in front of me I'm reading in Arabic and then I'm recording and then I have to load the video in the computer and then after that I have to uh, you know like do the recording to make it a file to be uploaded in YouTube and then after that the internet is the most horrible internet for those who do not know I don't know how old are you guys but in the beginning when we have internet it was the most horrible thing It's so slow it worked by the phone sometime even the phone then go through you have to dial a number I don't know how many of you remember those days do you guys remember <laughs> not like now you have a very fast internet you have the Wi-Fi you have to say this is before a cell phone so uh, it was really hard it take forever to load five minute videos it's like a, like a surgery yeah dial up you dial up oh the, the, the number is busy or your uh, your your modem is stuck you know your modem is stuck your modem cannot go so it was really horrible so now like you know you can uh, I mean we have different world today not a different world Uh, okay, Emax, uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, but most of people know, like now, maybe don't remember those old days, you know, how it used to be. So, anyway, like uh, to, to make a video before, it used to be really hard, very hard. Not like now, I can share with you on the screen and uh, I go live. Uh, there is, we can't compare we can't compare life is so different from before and and this is the funny thing about today by the way if you ask a woman today she said to you oh today I'm tired I did laundry don't they say that what laundry do you don't do laundry you put the clothes in the machine you push the bomb and then the clothes come out not only they are ready they are dry so what the laundry you did you want to see what laundry was? Go and see, check my grandmother. <laughs> I'm tired, I was doing shopping. You said she's tired, or she or he is tired, he was doing shopping. Go and see how, how it takes them to make bread. They spend, they, they wake up 5 a.m. in the morning, 4 a.m. in the morning, start doing, making the flour, the dough, and then she work hard, and then she walk for two hours, and then she go and do... Uh, uh, prepare a breakfast and then she come back and then she 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 have to light the fire by her hands uh, I mean you guys you have no idea you're lucky you go go and see back back in time and see people how you used to live right 
but now they complain from doing laundry it is uh, you know we push the bomb and then the clothes come ready and then what we are tired from because we put them in the drawer this is the tiring thing we put them in the drawer I mean this is very tiring All right Uh, yeah, so everything changed. Like uh, now, the entertaining world. Like now, you can open. There's there's cameras. Live. Actually, most of the time, I open. Uh, like there's live cameras. You can see around the world. Um, I mean, you can see beaches around the world. It's I mean, it's really beautiful. Technology is very helpful, but it can be very dangerous too. But depend what you use. Anything can be useful. Too much salt will kill you. Too much sugar will kill you. Too much water will you you will be drowned. Anything can be useful or the opposite. Right? لقد كنت عبدولان. I like your Abdulan language, my my friend. Uh, uh, Isa, he's saying he was Abdul and now he is not no more. So he is an ex-Muslim. He's saying to me in Arabic. He's saying, "قد كنت عبدولا وقد تحررت من الإسلام." I was Abdul. تحسنت وشفيت من مرض الإسلام. I was Abdul. This is what he's saying in Arabic, Isa. Well, good for you, my friend. Me myself, I never was Abdul. Did I tell you the story about the Abdul guy in Philippines? I think I did. Uh, but I don't know how many of you heard it before. I, I was in the elevator speaking in Arabic in the phone in the Philippines. When you go in the elevator, you lose connection, right? So I lost connection. And the guy, he took it as an opportunity to say to me, you know, to greet me. So he said, Assalamu Alaikum. He's an Abdul. He's a Muslim. So I answered him. He said, Wa Alaikum Assalam, Abdul. The guy, he looked at me. He says, MashaAllah, how you know my name? <laughs> Mashallah, how you know my name? I said, What? Oh, no, <laughs> all of you have dual for me. <laughs> it was a very funny moment. I mean, imagine if you are with me, and this guy he said to me, he, he thought I'm a Muslim because I speak Arabic. You know, he heard me speaking Arabic. He don't speak Arabic himself, he's a Filipino, but he heard me speaking Arabic, and uh, you know, he knew how the Arabic sound like. So he said, Assalamu alaikum. I said, Wa alaikum assalam, Abdul. He said, oh, mashallah, how you know I am Abdul? Like he's looking at me, and you should he, you should see his eyes. His eyes like we came like 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 wide, like a garage open, you know. He was like, Wow, how you know my name? You know? <laughs> that was a good one. Anyway, I, I actually this guy I took him to the yard uh, back like uh, you know like a garden parking uh, park park sorry like we were going up and then he said to me um, uh, so you are a Muslim I said no no I am not sure not well, that's not good so you know we start talking he said why not it's good to be a Muslim so do you want to show you I said sure so we instead of going up we stopped the elevator and we went down. We went to the park. We sat. I sat with him for some time, and he keeps saying, "There's no way in the Quran it says that. There's no way it says he have a Quran with him. He's very. He sounds like a very religious. Uh, anyway, he said he will ask his uh, scholar, and he will come back to me about what he heard from me. After a while, I saw him in the mall, and he have a wife. She's wearing a burqa with him. Totally burqa. She saw nothing. Her hands covered. He looked at me. He's saying like you know he's you know he making a move with his mouth his eyes which means don't talk to me. He was afraid in front of his wife to talk to me. You know, so I did not talk to him. Like don't talk to me, right? All right. Wa alaikum assalam, Abdul. I'm trying to read the the chat. It's very hard to follow.
Um, I hope your book will be translated to Basha Indonesia. As I know, some people are translating, but people they say I don't know if it's true or not. We will see. I mean, how much they are doing, I don't know. You wish you could talk to me. Everybody is welcome to talk to me, but you know, uh, I talk in private only if there is something important. Otherwise, I will spend the day talking to people. You know, so if there is something important, you can uh, um, you can text me only if something important. All right. Uh, Malika, you want to be my friend? All of you are my friends. Why? Are you my enemy? Guys, what, what is this about? All of you are my friends. Why not? Actually, I have many of you. I consider them the same as a family for me because I spend time with, with you more than I spend time with anyone. How many hours I'm here? So, I wish really I can meet all of you. It would be fun. I don't know how many of you hate me. <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> I hate me too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but sometimes it's good, like you know. But by the way, you you might meet me one day because my voice is is hard is in, uh, extremely. Uh, it's hard to hide. The second I talk, if you listen to me before, you will know that's it's me. I told you once I was in the Philippines too. I was in a coffee shop. There was a guy. Reading the Bible and he's taking notes. So I said, okay, this Christian guy, let's talk to him. Um, so I asked him what he's studying, etc. And, and then he says to me, I know you. And I was looking at him, how this guy he know me. In the beginning, I thought maybe he saw me in a seminar or something. He said, No, no, I know you. I said, I don't think we met before. He said, No, 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 I know you. I know you. And then after thinking, he said to me, Are you Christian Prince? Star, <laughs> are you? <laughs> yeah, so if you meet me ever, you will know me from my voice. I cannot hide my voice. Maybe you will meet a million people, you will not find somebody have the same. It's different, it can be recognized easy. You protect me. Oh, that's good. Actually, before I was seeking protection, now I'm safe. Yeah, thank you, all of you. Thank you. Yeah, sometimes actually I don't uh, like uh, go and uh, uh, argument because I don't want to. Um, you, know, you will be known in a second. Once I was doing a seminar, they did not announce that this is Christian Prince. They announced that a Christian from the Middle East, etc. They don't say Christian Prince. And then after I finish, two girls they came, and one of them she get like the other one. She's trying to push her to talk to me. So I said, okay, uh, you know, people are shaking hands with me after the seminar. So I said, how can I can help you? You want something? I said, yeah, I have a question. Uh, are you Christian Prince? And then I said, yeah. The other one, she said, see, I told you, this is him. <laughs> this is him. <laughs> but once a guy, he thought I am, he said to me, uh, are you Sam Shamoon? I said, did you see Sam Shamoon? He said, um, I said, I said what? I said, well, did you see how Sam, Sam Shamoon looked like? I said, um, I don't remember. I said, do I look like Sam Shamoon? <laughs> I mean, I look so far from Sam Shamoon. The guy asked me, are you Sam Shamoon? <laughs> so Sam Shamoon, like if he have a video, like if he's a, a person he don't go on video, I would understand him, I think, maybe, you know. But anyway. Yeah, you do security. Yeah, that you say the true security is security of the mind. You see, when a when a person he is not secure in his mind, he have no security. Because the first thing you live in your life inside the box of your head. There is all your fear, your trust, your life, your pleasure, your wisdom, your sadness. So try always to look for security in a different way. So do we have any Muslim want to say anything?
uh, Ahmed, Ahmed is saying once I fell asleep listening to, uh, to Christian Prince debate I ended having a dream a client of mine was yelling at me but CP voice was attached to his body actually one of you he sent me a picture yeah, hold on let me see if I can find it Sometimes things are funny. I don't know if I deleted. Uh, uh, somebody he 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 um, he have his car license plate. It says zero zero seven CP. Where is the picture? I think I deleted. Maybe. Yeah, I think I deleted. No, no, I have it. Here we go. CP <laughs> oh boy I'm not going to show all the number I don't know who this guy is you know but this is part of the number because there's letters I don't want to show all the letters <laughs> that's funny isn't it Zero zero seven. This is James Bond CP. Yeah, <clears throat> I don't know even what country is that. I like the car BMW. <laughs> I would like to exchange, exchange it for my donkey. Yeah, zero zero seven CP. I don't know where it is. I'm not sure really. Anyway, guys, I think we have enough for today, and uh, feel free to download the video. You can cut it pieces. The one, the, the part we are talking about marriage, etc. For those who like to help us, and especially the part where it says that Muslim men they can rent you, you know, if, as a female. But always my advice for all men and women, especially women, you know, women are very emotional and they are driven most of the time by emotion. And sometimes men, they take advantage of your emotion. So you have to be careful. You have to be in control of yourself. And don't be, um, you see, even in America, they say easy come, easy go. Is that correct? They say that easy come, easy go. So don't be easy. Don't be easy. And easy here. Is about being, I mean, uh, anyone can grab you, all right? Be something priceless. So when a man, he have you, he respect what he have. When a man, he got you, he knew he did not get something cheap. He did not get something everybody throw around before him. Don't be cheap. Be priceless. This is my advice to you, and it's up to you to listen or not. If you are my sister, I will talk to you the same way I'm saying right now. If any man can have you, why he wouldn't marry you? Why any man he wouldn't marry any woman? Because men always they like to get the benefit of the women, to enjoy her, but they don't want to have responsibility. So don't be cheap. Don't be, don't be some, some no one. You know, don't be like you see, you watch those movies. I mean, those stupid movies, they corrupt our mind, make us believe it's fun to have sex around. It's fun to have a boyfriend and replace a boyfriend, a new boyfriend. And then after sleeping with 100 men, what is what is next? You will be cheap. You will be like a, a used and abused car. People load, get out, load, get out, load, get out. You don't want to be a taxi. You are you are you are a child of God. You are priceless. Give what you have for someone he deserves it, someone he will love you. He don't want to have sex with you only. He sleep with you because he loves you and he wanna live with you forever. So if you want really a man to respect you, you need to force him to respect you. You earn the respect. It's not going to happen immediately.
Same for the man. The man who sleep around, don't marry him. The man who sleep with you because you have a nice body, he will leave you tomorrow because someone else have nicer body. Do you understand me? I'm just being honest with you. If this is the reason he is with you, for the same reason he will leave you. Like women, they want to make a surgery to have big breasts. Okay, so this guy, he want to be with you because you have big breasts? Why? Are you a cow? And tomorrow, he will see some women, she have a better breast. If this is the reason he made you, made him like you, this would be the same reason to dump you. Don't be stupid. Don't be stupid. This is why I say always, try to see someone who loves you, for things will grow, not things will shrink. Your beauty will shrink. Like somebody is proud, I have a nice body. I just saw somebody in the text saying that, I have a nice body. Well, your body will not be nice, just wait. The older you get, the, the faster you notice how, how much maintenance you need. You will carry a bag of medicine with you, even if you want to go to the bathroom. There's only one thing can grow. That is, you know, your spiritual life and your wisdom. So marry a person who is wise, who love you, for his wisdom will lead, will lead him and will lead you to live together in a better life. A person who he think, hey, going to the gym, okay, I'm going to the gym, I'm going to have a big muscle so the girls will look at me. This is a shallow person. He will not stay with you, trust me. The first girl he saw, see her wearing shorter skirt than yours, and she have nicer legs than yours. He will leave you and go for her. Right? But anyway, sometimes it's very hard to to convince people about what's right, what's wrong, and that's why they end the wrong end. You know, you will end the wrong end if you don't uh, treat yourself carefully. Uh, to women, don't ask Maher. I don't know what you mean. When a woman is a strong, then only the strong will approach you. I don't know what does that mean. When you, it's not about strong. This is not about strong. It's about reserving yourself from being tempted. Temptation is very powerful. Sometimes you feel lonely. Sometimes you you have you have needs. Your physical body have needs. We cannot deny that. So you have to fight your needs in order to get what is right. It's like you know somebody you want to eat, and I want to eat now. Okay, but if you wait maybe thirty minutes more, we can have a better food. So what people want, they want just life became a fast food, and today. Sadly, if you are, I don't want to use the word, but I have to use it. If you are a whore, they say you are nice, you are cool. Cool, you are cool. You are open-minded, you are fun. But in their eyes, trust me, you are a whore. They don't respect you. They speak about sleeping with you. As if you are, you know, they're proud about sleeping with you. So why are you want to do that? You know what I mean? Maybe my words is harsh for you, but this is the truth. Right? Uh, look look at the comments, guys. Some like look people, they don't uh, listen. I have a nice buddy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so what if you have a nice buddy? And what is next? Do you think the Korean should be forbidden? The Quran should be forbidden? Well, I don't know what it should be forbidden, uh, but I, you know, you cannot forbid a book because uh, it's impossible to forbid a book, first of all. Like the same, the Muslims, they forbid my books, but my books is there. They forbid my videos, but my people hear me. So it's not forbidding the book will solve the problem. 
it is speaking to the mind of people so they will not believe in it this is more powerful otherwise if you forbid something sometimes forbidding something make it more attractive you know what I mean to fight drugs is not just by saying I'm going to go out of after drug dealers but if you make people don't buy it if you con if you convince them not to buy it then drugs nobody will import drugs is that correct why there's drug dealers if nobody buy there's no drug dealers is that correct okay well so the best solution is make people more aware of the danger of drugs and they will not buy it then nobody can sell it then even if you bring drugs and put it in the street nobody will take it as simple as that so people always fight things in the wrong way like I fight it so I force my law like in Saudi Arabia you know you cannot you cannot have you cannot have sex without contract or supposedly which is a prostitution anyway but people they do and the more you force it the more they do it it is the most corrupt country ever everything happening there I remember the story of the limousine company you call the limousine car if you are a female they send you a, a male from Al Bosnia to sleep with you in the back seat if you are a male they send you a female from Al Bosnia or from those from uh, poor countries in the east of Europe Muslim countries and uh, you know it's a limousine in the car you know? uh, nobody drink alcohol more than them every year uh, hundreds of people die there because they drink perfume imagine perfume so here we go alcohol is forbidden but is it really forbidden it's not it became more attractive so forbidding things will not solve a problem right it's not really what make life better uh, anyway guys I want to say thank you for being here this video will not stay long so I will keep it there for a few hours and I will take it down so for those who want to download it feel free to download and again for for ladies I apologize if I use sometimes words might sound harsh for you but trust me it's for your benefit so nobody can take advantage of you be strong don't be cheap let the man respect you force him to respect you don't be available to anyone you know there's a hadith uh, uh, about a guy who have his his wife anyone can touch her I mean look what kind of life this life is anyone can touch her so even the man who marry you he will not feel special yeah he have many men before him and maybe you will have many men after him so why you what no comment thank you guys for being here uh, uh, I and I hope what I share with you was good and if it was not good don't listen to me maybe I'm not right uh, thank you Lord for having all those people here and thank you Lord for those who help us and support us and uh, I really appreciate all of you and I receive a lot of messages full of love and and I don't know what to say I'm really I feel I feel bad because I cannot respond to you but I apologize really it's too many and I cannot really answer everybody I prefer to come here you know because English is not my first language too so sending back emails like some of you send me wrong email for me if I send you an email I would say thank you for your kind words or you know it's very it's not easy for me to type back so you want to talk to me talk to me here in the chat I will answer you I will be happy to to give you the time you deserve uh, so with this I want to say thank you guys may the Lord bless you and until we see you soon again Christ is Lord and Islam is false God bless take care